If you're learning 3D, whether it be in ArcVis, VFX, animation, or game development, at some point you will have to learn and use lighting to render your projects. And trust me, this will make or break how your final project looks like. So in today's video, I tried to collect a list of some of the most important lighting concepts that you will definitely use in your 3D workflow at some point. If you are new to 3D, Knowing about these concepts is a very important introduction to lighting, but I think you will find this interesting even if you've been around the block. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Before we continue, I wanted to let you know guys that the Blender Market is having right now a huge summer sale with 25% discount on thousands of Blender products from add-ons, courses, shaders, you name it. Also, if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of the best add-ons and courses that can take your projects to the next level. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's start with GI or Global Illumination which is a technique that simulates how light bounces off surfaces and spreads through a scene. And without it, it is very difficult to illuminate any scene. So you will find this in any 3D software to help you bring your scene from darkness to light very quickly, creating a more realistic lighting with soft shadows and color bleeding. Now, please pay attention to this. Unlike direct lighting, which only accounts for light that travels in a straight line from the light source to the object, global illumination considers the complex interplay of light as it reflects and scatters throughout the environment. And this is, I think, what makes it more important than any lighting or lighting technique that you can apply. I I'm saying this because the importance of this process is that it creates more realistic lighting effects, as it mimics the way light behaves in the real world, where surfaces like walls, floors, and objects contribute to the overall lighting by reflecting light onto the other surfaces, and it does this a ridiculous number of times, like millions of times or even billions of times. For example, in an interior scene, like a room or something, light coming through a window not only brightens the objects directly in its path, like other light sources, but also bounces off walls, floors, and ceilings, spreading light rays throughout the environment of the room. The importance of GI is that it helps simulate the subtle light bounces, creating soft shadows, diffused light, and color bleeding, where the color of the surface can affect the color of the light bouncing onto other surfaces. And even though GI is very important for the overall lighting of your scene, the nice lighting concept is even more important for realistic rendering, and that is high dynamic range imaging, or the use of HDR eyes. Using HDR images as light sources is often used to create realistic environments. Basically, HDR eyes are used to capture a wide range of light information, including subtle variations in intensity and color and to make CGI elements that match live-action footage. But what does that mean? This technique is often used in photogrammetry and especially in visual effects for the most part, and they do this to capture and represent a much wider range of light intensities compared to the standard imaging methods. You see, in traditional images, interestingly enough, they are known as low dynamic range. They are known as low dynamic range images because they have a limited range of brightness levels. HDR eyes, on the other hand, allow for the capture of the full spectrum of light, from the deepest shadows to the brightest lights. That's why VFX artists love them, since they preserve all the subtle nuances of light and color that you can use in a scene. And that later can be used to spill the realistic lighting onto 3D objects. So, in other words, an HDR image is used as a light source in a 3D scene, and it allows for the simulation of natural lighting conditions with great accuracy. But understanding the next lighting concept helps you add depth and immersion to your final render, especially for game dev, animation, and VFX projects, and that is volumetric lighting. Basically, volumetric lighting is a technique that simulates the way light interacts and moves through particles in the air, creating visible and sometimes not so visible beams or shafts of light as it passes through mediums like dust, mist, fog, or smoke. This effect is often seen in nature, such as sunlight filtering through the forest or beams of light streaming through a dusty window. 
And replicating this in your project is possible, and doing so is crucial for adding realism, depth, and atmosphere to a scene. For example, in a scene set in a poorly lit and misty forest, volumetric lighting can create eerie beams of light that cut through the fog, which I think can lead to something beautiful. And I would say we don't usually notice these things unless you know about them, but once you understand them, it will make more sense. The next lighting concept is divided into two things, which helps you add to your renders a creative touch to convey a desired result, and that is soft and hard lighting. In 3D, soft and hard lighting are two fundamental concepts that significantly influence the mood, tone, and realism of your scenes. To differentiate between the two, soft lighting is characterized by a gentle, diffused light that creates minimal shadows and smooth transitions between light and dark areas. And the best example of this is daylight coming from a window. And this type of lighting is typically produced by a large light source relative to the subject, such as light coming from a sky directly as we said, or light bounced off a large reflector. Hard lighting, on the other hand, is defined by its sharp, well-defined shadow and high contrast between light and dark areas. And this type of lighting is produced by small, direct light sources relative to the object, such as a spotlight or direct sunlight. Hard lighting, on the other hand, can also be used to convey a sense of unease and danger, which is often employed in action scenes or sequences. In addition, they can be used also in night scenes or high contrast environments. But one type of lighting technique that helps you fake environments using light and shadows is using gobos. So what are these? Gobos short for go-betweens or go-between objects are planes which are used in lighting to shape or control the projection of light by blocking or redirecting portions of it. Typically, a gobo is kind of a plane, plate, or texture that is placed right in front of the light source to cast specific patterns, shape, or textures onto a surface within a scene. And these patterns can range from simple geometric shapes to complex designs such as foliage, window panes, trees, or abstract textures. In the context of lighting, especially in ArcViz, VFX, or 3D animation, gobos are crucial for several reasons. First, they add visual interest in depth to the scene by breaking up the light and creating intricate shadow patterns. This can transform a flat and uniform lighting setups into something more dynamic and textured. And for instance, in a scene where a character is inside a room, a gobo might be used to mimic the effect of sunlight streaming through the window with blinds, casting realistic shadows on the walls and the floor. As you can see, this not only add realism, but also helps you convey the time of the day, mood, and setting without the need for complex modeling or additional light sources, which is great, to be honest. We also have caustics, which in 3D fields refer to complex light patterns which are formed when light rays are refracted, reflected, or focused through a transparent or a reflective surface. These patterns are often seen as bright, intricate shapes or lines or surfaces where light has been concentrated, such as the shimmering patterns at the bottom of the swimming pool. The concentrated light spots under the glass of water or the focused light beams created by a crystal or a gem. In the context of 3D rendering and animation, caustics are an important aspect of achieving realistic lighting, particularly in scenes involving water, glass, liquids, or other materials that can bend or focus light. And when light passes through a transparent object like a glass of water, it bends or refracts and can also reflect off the inner surfaces of the glass, creating concentrated areas of light. And these concentrated light patterns, known as caustics, contribute significantly to the realism of a scene making it more lifelike and visually compelling. Using caustics is definitely gonna help you improve your renders, but if you want to create realistic organic stuff that can look realistic, like characters, you will have to know about the next lighting concept called subsurface scattering. Subsurface scattering is a phenomenon in which light penetrates the surface of a translucent material, scatters beneath it, and then it exists at a different point. This scattering of light gives a material a soft, glowing appearance that is crucial for replicating the realistic look of materials like skin, wax, marble, in addition to certain types of plastic. And just so I can explain it better, while light hits these materials, it simply doesn't bounce off the surface. Instead, it travels through the material, interacting with its internal structure before emerging, which creates the effect of light diffusion within the project or the object. And this is what makes all the difference. This is particularly important because 
it allows for realistic portrayal of organic materials, especially human skin. And if you tried to create human skin before, or if you watched it closely, you know how complex it is. So light scatters through the layers of tissue and exits with a certain degree of color change and softening. And without accurately simulating this effect, skin would appear unnaturally harsh and plastic-like, lacking the softness and subtle color variations which are key for a lifelike appearance. And this is, I would say, a problem for a lot of 3D artists, especially those who create characters. And there you have it guys. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to this channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.